we'll start by opening InfoPath. Microsoft Office, Microsoft InfoPath Designer 2010. As you can see, that SharePoint list is one of the popular form templates. And that's the one that we're going to use. For the location, we're going to type a ABC University courses site. Click Next. So the list name is going to be Lab Accident Reports. Then we're just going to click Finish. So you can see uh, what we see by default here is this title and attachments, which are essentially coming from the custom list. And in the fields, we have ID, title, created by, modified by, modified created, and so on. So those are all the standard SharePoint fields. So we can, we can add more fields to it or columns to it that we want to use within the list. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click, by, click on Add Field. And you can see that the interface is a bit different, but all the information that's being collected is exactly the same as if you were to create this column in SharePoint. So the name of the field is going to be type. This is going to be um, a choice of items. So notice that we have various choices. I mean, we have choice menu to choose from, choices allow multiple selections, choices of fill in, and so on. We'll just use the basic one right now, choices the menu to choose from. And then we'll go to edit choices. And uh, just quickly, I'll remove all the existing choices instead of modifying them. And we'll add choice by choice. So we have first choice general. Chemical spill. Fire. And then finally, broken glass. So these are the types of accidents that we can get in the lab. I'm sure there, there would be many more, but those are just the values that we're going to have right now. Um, if we want, we can make this field required, but you know we don't need to. And um, But if we do it, then that means that the user is going to have to fill it out. Click OK. So you can see, just like the title, the type of the accident is it's going to be required. So now we're going to add a number of other fields. So let's go through it. We'll add description. And this one is going to be multiple lines of text. And we'll just do uh, plain text. And then click OK. And let's add another field. So date and time of the accident. And that's self-explanatory. We need date and time. Then let's add another field. This is going to be the location of the accident. And we'll just leave that as a single line of text. And click OK. Now let's another field. And that's where we're getting to interesting fields, like the root cause. So what actually caused the accident. And in this case, uh, we will have also a choice item. And notice that you can choose choice with fill in, menu to choose from, or text. So what that means, um, in this case, the user can either select from a menu or write something in. And let's edit choices. And we'll repeat the process just like last time. We'll add a choice. Standard operating procedure error. So someone was following the procedure, but uh, there's something wrong in it, and that's why the accident happened. Or maybe the person was not trained or not following the standard operating procedure properly. 
So let's just add some of these other items like uh, uh, negligence is one of the options and also using outdated SOP. So instead of, instead of using the current one, maybe they use the one that was printed a year ago, which was not a good idea since maybe the lab settings have changed. So that's our root cause field. And now we're gonna add corrective actions. So what, what has been done to fix um, essentially what happened? And here we're gonna do choice, but allow multiple selections because you can do more than one corrective action. And again, we'll edit choices and we'll add some choices. Um, so one of the actions is just update the SOPs. If the standard operating procedure was run, you can update it. Another one, we can reprimand the student. Another one is train students. So if some someone just didn't know how to do something, we can train them and next time they won't have an accident. And finally, take away lab access. Somebody was really bad, maybe they shouldn't be in a chemistry lab to start with. So those are some of the corrective actions that we're gonna have. Then let's add another field. And this field is going to be um, amount of chemicals spilled. So this is related to the chemical spill. And this is gonna be a number. And for the minimum value, we'll put zero. So you can't spill less than zero. And then click okay. Then let's add another field. And uh, this is gonna be type of chemical spilled. And we'll choose choice with fill in menu. And we'll just have two choices in this one. We'll just uh, modify the ones that are already there. Um, hydrochloric acid. So that's pretty bad stuff if you spill that. And uh, for the second one, we're gonna have ammonia. So also pretty bad stuff. Um, not as bad as hydrochloric acid, I don't think. So we have type of chemical spilled. And uh, we still need a couple more fields related to other things like uh, we're going to have the type of fire uh, and um, injury response and injured person. So let's let's add those in. So injured person, and that's going to be a person. You can see our list is getting quite quite long. Then we'll add another field. And this is going to be injury response. And that's also going to be choice menu to choose from. Edit choices. And let's add some choices. This is definitely the most fields we've created in any of the SharePoint lists so far, or, you know, the form that's going to create the list. And This would be very similar to a typical form used in, in a real, um, real world example. And just a couple more fields. So type of fire. And again, choices, many to choose from. And we'll do chemical, that'd be bad. And uh, then natural gas, those gas burners in the lab could, could start a fire. Finally wood, so not likely in a chemistry lab, but possible. And one last field, fire length and going to be a number. Click OK. 
So now we're done creating all the data. And that's actually the first thing you want to do is you want to go through and decide all the data that you're going to collect. The layout you can always change later, but the data is a lot harder to collect once the form has been filled out. And then you have to go back and uh, ask the people to fill out the form again.